Hi. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading and responding, in my personal opinion, to some of the letters I've received about your issues with a narcissist in your life. Before I begin, please remember, I'm not a professional, and I'm only going to give you answers if I've lived through it, if I feel I'm firm grounding, and that I identify with it. Going forward, I may stop in the middle of reading these letters and give my comment then. Please give me your advice on that. Is it better that I do that or is it better that I le read the mail all the way through and comment at the end? We'll see how it goes. Here's my first letter. This video is going to be in two parts because the second part is going to be an audio recording. Hi Tom. I hope you are well. This is a tough one. My mom is 89 years old and lives in Denver. I am going to a class close to there in two weeks and have recently started talking to my younger sister after two years. I'll paint a brief picture of what transpired two years ago, which led to my very enlightening education on narcissism. My husband is a doctor and I am a registered nurse. We run a very successful medical practice in San Jose. I was enabling my family for years financially, buying cars, vacation, paying for all kinds of bills, and even bought a townhouse in Denver for them to live in. I asked them to pay half the mortgage and I would cover the rest and split the bills, even though I never lived there. Because their credit was so bad, they could not find a rental. They would only live in a nice part of town, or they could not even afford to pay for one. Their share was $700 a month in a Denver market. For those of you who don't uh, live in the United States or don't know, Denver is an extremely affluent and very expensive market. I had a one I had one room there for myself and kids if we wanted to go visit or skiing, etc. I suffered years of horrible migraine headaches and it ended up, ended up addicted on Vicodin. So Basically, you're with about 30% of the United States, if not the entire planet. Um, I was addicted to Vicodin uh, before uh, I got tons of Botox injections in my arms and my legs, and then finally had to move to a interethal pump. I beat it, thankfully, but it was difficult. Good for you. That's not an easy task. Not in the least. And if anyone ever tells any of you that it's being weak, just run. I left an empty bottle of Vicodin in the room and I would stay in and my mother went snooping through my things and found it. The answer was to cut me off and the whole family ghosted me. Now you see, that's interesting. Isn't that something? Instead of doing what a healthy family or a healthy parent would do, they cut you off. Instead of doing what a healthy parent should do, and that is sit down, have an open and honest discussion, let them know that you're safe. Find out how you can help. You can't change an addict unless they want help but you have to somehow know that you're concerned and that you love them and you're there for them as supporting. Not to cut you off and throw you away and discard you like you were garbage because you had a problem. 
There's another thing on that. This is wonderful supply for a narcissist. Because then they can tell their friends, what well, little friends they have, or their acquaintances, that she has an addict for a daughter. She's then able to relieve herself from all the mistakes that she's made and let everyone around her see that they're your fault, not hers. This also gives her additional supply to be able to continually tell her friends it was so hard, it was so tough, and then she can garner that sympathy, letting her breathe in that. It's oxygen. The answer was to cut me off and the whole family ghosted me. Also, my oldest son's girlfriend died in Texas and he ended up trying to make a go of it in a new life in Denver but we found out how he, he had a big, pretty big drug problem. He stole several items from his cousin and pawned them. When I found out, I flew back to Denver and we went to every porn store and bought every single thing back. And then he went to treatment. He made amends to the cousin he stole from and it was over between them. He lives here in San Jose now, has completely turned his life around, works at Apple, and is 100% independent and sober for over two years. Congratulations. And good job, Mom. Good job, Dad. That's what parents do. Support, not throw away. I don't even know you, and I'm proud of you. The family still is waiting for the amends, which is step nine in AA. I refuse to make any because I don't feel it's warranted. The amends is solely up to you. You should never be forced or demanded to make amends. Because when you're forced, or you they put pressure on you to make amends, that's for them. It's not has anything to do with you. What somebody in that position should do is be there to support you. They should experience and feel genuine joy that you're doing well. Not automatically see what's in it for them. How can I get supply off of this? Well, let me tell you something. Good for you. Great job. The whole family ghosted him too. It doesn't matter to my narcissistic mother or other family members that this kid is living an amazing life. She wants the amends for hurting her feelings. And I listened carefully to the phone call. I'll send a tape call in another email because it's on my phone. The definition of amends is to be as, to me, as it's been explained, amends are about genuine change in our behavior and not the patchwork of an apology. Bingo. So we both feel amends have been made. Amends is about you, making yourself healthier, making lifting that burden off of you or those that ha you have truly and deeply hurt. But the way I understand it, and I went and read step nine, and I'm going to read some of it here. The way I understand it is that you truly have to feel, feel it. You truly have to believe that you've wronged somebody. 
and you truly have to be ready for it. You said your son was two years sober? That's a foundation. It's a damn good one. But I bet you it's a fragile one. And I'll go into that in a moment. I grew up in the New England area, Boston, New York. And my mother never worked. She cleaned and had the goal of portraying the perfect image of herself and my three sisters. It's everything, isn't it? But if they only knew what was really going on under that roof. Our looks, weight, etc. were always the most important feature in our home. We were never guided towards a higher education, only to marry a successful man. Yikes. I never felt that warm, fuzzy love from her because it wasn't there. I'm sorry. I mean, it's, it's not easy for me to say. I don't say that uh, casually, but um, the love wasn't there, and that's why you didn't feel it, and I think you know that. She did not have any friends. Of course not. Most of them would see right through her. She would tell me things like, you are not college material. How nice is that to say, huh? And I married my husband for his money. In parentheses, we have a strong 15-year marriage. Good for you. She would gaslight the hell out of me. Example, I went to Kenya on safari with my friend and son. She said we were crazy for going to Africa, and why the hell would I want to go there? yet bragged to anyone she knew that her daughter was on safari. Same thing going to do medical mission work in Peru. I'm going, I'm crazy for going. Yet to everyone else on the planet, I was an amazing human being. Drove me nuts. There is, of course, more, but I'll leave you with those examples. So, remember, she's got to keep that that image of the perfect family dynamic. And by telling everyone else that you are this good giving soul, which you obviously are, she's taking the credit for that to people who will listen to her. She's in her head thinking they're not going to think that she's a great gal. They're going to think I'm a great mother. And that I did good. So she's riding on your successes to make herself look as if she is the good mother. Meanwhile, number one, you've done all these things on your own. And they're pretty cool things. But why does she mock you when it's just you and her? If she's telling everybody how an amazing human being you are, why is she telling you you're crazy for doing this or that? That is because she wants to see your reaction. She wants to see the disappointment in your face. Supply. She's feeding on you when she does that. I made someone else feel bad. Thus, I feel better. That's all supply. And she didn't do these things herself. So she puts you down for doing good things that she could never do. Narcissistic mothers are notorious, as well as fathers, for being jealous of their children's achievements. Things that they didn't have the chutzpah, the guts, to go ahead and do themselves. And again, gaining supply off the, your back. So she appears to be a successful mother when she knows she's not. Supply on both ends. Isn't it something? However, let me say this was a true blessing. I did not respond to anyone. Went to get some therapy, 
and found out all about narcissism. It was spot on. I had already immediately stopped paying the bills and we are renting the house for a nice profit. And it turned out to be a great investment. Good for you. My mother tried to pay me back for the dog I bought her by mail me, mailing me a monthly check. So I took her money and sent it to a dog rescue. And they sent her a nice note, thank you note, monthly. And what have I told you guys before when I came around the holidays and they sent they sent a check or cash? I said, give to charity. They'll send her a thank you note. They'll send him a thank you note. And they'll get the message and they'll stop doing it. Those are my exact words. And what happened? Again, kudos for you. Wish you were my mom. Yes, the check stopped after she saw what I was doing. Over those two years, my husband said he has seen a huge change in me. And I have seen a huge change in my son. I also have a son in the Navy in Japan who has stayed out of it. So the first thing I'm going to say is, go Navy. And that your son in the Navy is staying out of it? Absolutely. Who wants to burden him with all that noise? I do not discuss all the psychotic episodes with the narcissist in my life. Why put that, 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 that confusion in his head? And I'll tell you something. He's now 21 years old. One of the best men I know. And he sees it. And I never, ever had to go through that. And you know, about your husband said he's seen a huge change in you, and you've seen a change in your in your son. What more can you ask for? Look at the path you're on. And let me ask you, are you gonna let anyone interrupt? that path. Think about this. Is there a threat for someone to interrupt that path? So about three weeks ago, I started some very small chatter with my younger sister. I had the advantage of leaving the family at age 25 and moved to Germany for a few years and never returned to Colorado. My mother has enabled my 46-year-old sister her whole life. Even though she was married at times and this woman is still unable to live on her own, despite having a CT tech making good money. I have sympathy for her because she has never known a healthy way to live. Only what my mother says. Yep, I get that. And I even did a video on the abuse of the golden child because in, in a way, they are, they are never letting the child grow up on their own. They're smothering, they're enabling. So it, it is a form of abuse. To some, that's really difficult to see. My blessing, getting out young and going through a tough addition, uh, uh, add, uh, addict, <laughs> has made me a much better person. Yes, it has. And so many of my mistakes have made me a better person. And I bet you still, you'll never make more mistakes than me. I have one free day to meet for lunch or coffee. What keeps playing in my mind is that I know my mom doesn't have much time left. Okay. She can't hurt, it. She can't hurt me anymore. Can't make me feel sorry for her. No. I learned so much these last two years. All right, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to tell you what my experience was briefly when I reconnected with the narcissist in my life I went through these motions of she's not going to have time enough she's getting old she's going to die soon I'm sick what happens if I die first without leaving the men's and I reestablished contact and I almost died from it. And that's a fact. That's not a saying. That's a fact. 
and my mind and the tapes, everything came back 25 years later. And I started rehashing what happened 25 years ago. They're still lethal. I don't care if they're 99 bedridden. They are lethal. Keep that in mind. Please. Don't judge. Have strong boundaries and I don't enable. Good. Excellent. Boundaries. Helping is doing something for someone they cannot do for themselves. So that part of my life's chapter is well closed and locked. Okay, be cautious. I always thought that too. I'm honestly afraid to see her, but I don't know how I will feel when she is gone. Well, neither do I, but uh, I have a pretty good idea. Uh, This may shock you. I've thought about this, and I've talked to people about this. I'm going to feel safe. I remember towards going towards the last two years when I still had contact with her, and I knew it was winding down. She's a snowbird. That means she picks her ass up off the reclining chair, flies down to Florida, and spends the winter months there. And I would feel safe. I would feel relieved. So, when my narcissist goes, I'm going to feel safe that I can't be hurt anymore. Even though I know I'm on strong ground now, I'm on good, solid footing. I've educated myself. I have good people around me. I still feel a little unsafe that I'm going to be hurt that someone else is going to be lied to about me. I still have that uneasy feeling. So when she passes away, I think I'll feel safe. I'm honestly afraid to see her, but I don't know how I will feel when she is gone. I refuse to get in the middle of the diatribe between my, my mom and my son and will not let him what I feel and will not tell him what I feel he should do. That's his own business either way. My family thinks I should make, make, capitals, this 25-year-old, 25-year-old man make amends. No boundaries whatsoever. That's right, he's a grown man. He's going to have to make his own mistakes. He's going to have to learn his own lessons. And he's going to have to enjoy his own successes. And And he's going to have you to celebrate that success with. And your husband. And his brother. You can't make a 25-year-old man feel a genuine uh, uh, case of uh, 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 apologetic feelings. That has to come from within. And I listened to your tape. And that will be in part two. And it's a doozy. I would suggest everyone wait for this one. I'll say this in closing. I don't think your son has anything to apologize for. I think you should be proud of him. And I'm sure you are. When somebody demands an apology in this case, specifically a narcissist. It's not about them wanting your son to feel better or recognize what he's done. It's about them. They want them to bow their head and submit and say, you are right, I was wrong. I'll go into this more in the second part. But what's really going on there is because once she has the apology, she's got him hooked for additional future supply. And it doesn't even have to come directly from your son. If your son apologizes, she now has supply to tell everybody that she, how bad he was how he had gravel, and he finally apologized. She wouldn't budge. 
until he apologized. And here's the rub right here. Two years sober. Do you think your mother is going to accept that apology humbly and not ever mention it again? Not ever mention the mistakes he may have made? And I heard the tape. I, I heard some of the mistakes. You people in the audience are going to go, that's it? It was all about her. She wants him to apologize so she can live. She's only got a couple years left to go. And she knows it. And she's fighting for that supply. She can tell people that your son was wrong. She can tell people how she helped him get through this by apologizing. That's her supply. It's got nothing to do with your son. I'll tell you what I did not hear. What I did not hear is her being proud of your son for the accomplishments that he's achieved. Look at that. Getting over an addiction, turning yourself around for two years, working at Apple, they don't hire just anybody. There's some pretty bright boys and girls there, let me tell you. In fact, they're incredibly intelligent. She's not giving any of that, is she? She's not being happy for you. But if he apologizes, it acknowledges to her that you were at one time a bad parent, not good. It gives her the rest of her life of supply. And do you think she's going to leave that alone? Or is she going to bring that up and every once in a while gnaw at him? And we know, don't we, what, how we feel internally when that narcissist digs and digs and digs and digs about our past, and especially when it's not true, especially when it's not warranted. Can your son afford that with two years sobriety? This is 27 minutes already. I'll go over the remainder in part two with the tape. Thank you for submitting this. I've got quite a number of requests. I can only do a certain amount of time uh, uh, requests or letters during a certain amount of period. But if you've not gotten a response from me that I cannot do it, I will be doing it. Thank you. I'm wishing you a peace. And most of all, thank you for sharing this story.